I just don't like where it's at. It's like right oh. in the face. That's loud. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hey, how you doing? This is uh Grant and Matt. Hi, good, good. Hi, Matt. How you doing? How are you? Good. How are you? Good, 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 good. I'm in the sun right now in California. It's great. <laughs> nice. uh, no, it's really cool, actually. You know, I left this horrible weather back in the UK, and I'm here, like enjoying the sun. That's the main That's thing. Awesome. I'm actually near Santa Barbara on my way to LA, so. I couldn't ask for more. Nice. <laughs> anyway, by the way, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on and talking to us. Um, That's good. We just got a, uh, got a handful of questions for you today, and um, we won't keep you for too long. So. That's all right. I'm here to answer all the questions you have, guys. All right. So how about um, you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into music, how you got your start. Wow! 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 That's, 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 a, that's, a lot. And that's, that's actually always always like like kind of tricky question, but uh, let's do it that way. I've, okay, I was born in Italy. Okay. And um, but I've been traveling around the world since I was just a kid. So basically, um, you know, I kind of soaked all the influences of all my travels, and um, and I remember when I was like eight, nine years old. Um, there was a my older cousin. I was like in the south of Italy on vacation, and uh, it, it kind of uh, forced me to sit down in the chair and put uh, put some headphones on. And he said, like, "Now you got to listen to this, right?" And he thought I was going to leave like in, in like in two minutes. But actually, I stayed there. I listened to the old tape. And I remember on that tape there were songs from Guns N' Roses, Beatles, Cap Stevens. It was like a good mixtape, nice. and for an eight years old kid it was like kind of wow what is this and th- probably that day changed my life when i was eight years old and after that i thought i want to i want to give the same emotion that i'm feeling right now right so you know little by little you start with the uh, small bands and uh, playing covers most of the times but then eventually you go into originals because that's the way to get noticed i think right. and um uh, and then uh, I decided, like it was 2007, 2008, that Italy was too small for me. So I thought, wow, just what's the closest place I can go? And it was London. That's where I went, and that's where it all began. And I, uh, back in 2011, I signed a contract with a big label. I can't reveal the name. But I thought, wow, I made it. But actually, it wasn't really a good experience. So after... One year we, we you know we we parted and um, and then I decided to go independent and here I am with a new record now. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, go ahead. <laughs> um, who or what could you say are your influences? Well, I, I mean, like uh, that's another tricky question to answer, <laughs> but. Uh, I think I think I think again. I think everywhere I've been in the world. I lived in three continents. I lived um, in Europe. I lived in the UK. I, I, I went to America. I lived in Australia. So I think everywhere you go, you just take a little bit of it. But if I if I had to give you some names, I think when I was a kid, I, I was listening to um, mostly, of course, American and English. Music. So in America, I was a huge fan of Bon Jovi when I was a kid. Bon Jovi, Aerosmith, Guns N' Roses, and um, and to me, uh, the gods of music they always mean the Beatles. So when I went, when I when I when I got into the Beatles music, that changed again my view of music, and uh, and I think you can you can hear this influence, and especially in the new record. Because my first record, One Way, which were, it was released back in 2011, and it was re-released in 2013, he had a more like a rocky edge, so more of my American side. But definitely the new record got more of a singer-songwriting kind of point of view. 
So I think the Beatles kicked in, basically. Right. <laughs> um, do you have a certain process that you go through when you write your music, or do you just kind of let it come out? Uh, I think I, it all starts with the, with, with, with the melody. I don't start with lyrics. Some some artists they start with title, for example. You have a great title, and then you write your song around that title. Um, to me, it's different. I just I have a melody in my mind, and um, I take my guitar and I start like mumbling something like na 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 or la 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 la, and then eventually the music get takes you to a place where it's so easy to write lyrics after that. Because basically, it's, it's, it's the harmonies, the melodies that suggest you mm-hmm. where you want to go with that song. So after that, uh, lyrics come really, really easy. So I don't have to think about the lyrics too much because basically, it's, it's, the song is taking me there already. That's I personally start. Um, I, I, I mean, I always did that since the very beginning. And um, even though in the last record there's a song which is the title track, it's called "Gravity Always Wins." Which for the first time I I try to um, just go the other way, start with lyrics. So I wrote a poem, and then I thought, let's try and 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 put it into music, and I think it worked quite alright. But it usually it's not my usual way to uh, to write a song. I usually start with a melody in my mind. I, you know, it's good to have nowadays we have smartphones, right? So when you have a melody that you know comes up, you can always take your phone, record it, otherwise, otherwise you, most of the time you just lose it. It happens so many times, you have a melody in your mind, and then you, you, you think you know it, but then you, you, you lose it, it goes away. Yeah. So it's good to have a smartphone <laughs> that you can record on it. And uh, I have like hundreds, I swear hundreds, or like little uh, melodies here and there on my phone that are still on you, they're just there to be, you know, used again in the future and I think I can write like three, four records with all the melodies that I have recorded on my on my phone. So usually this is the, the, the usual process. You start with the melody and then the song takes you to a place like as I said before, where lyrics really come easy. They come natural. You don't have to think about it. Nice. Yeah that's uh that's great now that everybody can just record something on their phone and not have to worry about forgetting a great little something they put together and then they try to recreate it later. And <laughs> Man, it's so frustrating. You have no idea when you think you have it. I mean, like, uh, I can only imagine when people like, I don't know, Keith Richards or Paul McCartney used yeah. to do back in, back, in the, back in the day. I remember that Paul McCartney wrote yesterday um, in the middle of the night. He just woke up and uh, he wrote yesterday, which at uh, start he was called, I think, Scramble Eggs. And uh, but that's the way they used to do it, just to record it straight away. Now we have smartphones. It's much easier this day. It's much easier, man. Yeah. Yeah, I do the same. I uh, I write a lot of guitar, so anytime I have anything that I like, I'll I'm like, oh man, I need I need to record yeah. that. So now I just have a uh, uh, just way too much stuff on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then the same with me. So I always have like big memory, like like 64 gigs, something like that, so that you can always have room for new melodies and stuff. I have hundreds, you know. I have hundreds, hundreds. But it's good. It's good because you always have new material that you can work on. Yeah. You oh, have yeah. stuff from scratch. I mean, I think it would be a waste if you have something that it's worth. Um, it's worth writing that you can just lose it like that. I think it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a giant jet is flying over my house right now. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That wow. Never happens. Yeah, we live right next. I, I uh, live right next to uh, a university, so they have an airport there, and every once in a while, a big jet will fly in and out. <laughs> <laughs> So what could you say that your songs are about? Uh, what are your lyrics usually about? Well, I mean, like, again, it, it, it's true It's true that most of the time you write about yourself. Mm-hmm. But then you realize after a while that writing about yourself is not enough because you, you, you don't write for yourself. You write for people. So you have to put yourself in their shoes. And... Uh, 
your life experience can definitely be in there, right? But once you have your target in mind, you have that you're writing for that certain demographic, um, you know you know what to write about. You mm-hmm. most of the time it's definitely love because mm-hmm. that's what that's what sells most of the time. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's that's what they say, right? But especially the new record is very um it's very intimate. That's why uh, everything is um it just goes around my voice and the acoustic guitar. And then we start from there and we build the song around it. So um um, again, I think when you start writing for people is where you really grow as an artist. It's true you have to write for yourself because eventually we're all, you know, uh, poets that want to get a message through. Yeah. And most of the time we're selfish. We want people to know how we feel. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't think it's enough nowadays. I think you need to uh, have in mind who you're writing uh, to and uh, act accordingly. So your life experience has to be in there, but I don't think it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's not the main part anymore because it's, it, it, it's such a big uh, struggling business today that you need to, uh, to know who you're writing for. And um, so this is it. The new record is very, very intimate, but still, um, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about your sister, your brother, your father. I'm not talking about myself. And that's where a song, I think, becomes so successful. Mm-hmm. When someone takes your songs and make it, and now it's yours. It's not mine anymore. Right. Yeah, for sure. That way it helps uh, the fans connect to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, everybody can relate to it. Mm. Or find a way to relate was, some other life to it. And... After, I think to me the key for success today is if it's people can relate to your song. That's mm-hmm. vital. It's crucial. Think about Adele. You know, the big success that Adele had like a few, a few years, a few years back. Adele was the the next door girl, broken hearted, and he was writing about her broken heart, mm-hmm. and everyone can relate to that. Remember the song. Uh, someone like you mm-hmm. was a huge success around the world, and uh, I think that's the example that everyone should 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 follow. Just write for yourself, but write for people. That's mm-hmm. the most important part. Yeah, I agree. I'd say that answers our next question too. So, <laughs> <laughs> I ask you, uh, what were some of the obstacles you've had to overcome? to get more commercial success and stuff, but I think that kind of covered it, <laughs> writing for other people to relate to it. So, um, Do you have any advice you'd have for aspiring musicians uh, that are trying out? Wow. Uh, I think, as I said before, I think, uh, you need to start thinking about who is going to come to your show. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important. Who's going to buy your record if they still buy records today? That's a good question. <laughs> but, but, but who's going to come to your show? I think the live show is still like it was like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And people need to realize that if people don't turn their head when they come to your show, if you don't get that connection between you and your audience, you might as well do something else. That's what I believe. So yeah. again, yes, uh, write down what, how you feel, but always think about what your audience is going to feel about it. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's, not, it's not about yourself, it's about them. And when you get that uh, magic recipe, I think you're halfway there. Yeah. I... Couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good advice. Yeah. Um... I mean, I... I, I learned that with experience. I used to only write about myself. Yeah, this is cool. This is about how I feel. It's about me. It's about me. It's not about me. It can't be about me. People don't care about the singer, but how the, uh, the singer on stage is feeling in that moment is singing that song. They want, to, they, want, they want the singer to talk about them. They want to feel important. They don't care about how the singer feels, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Makes, yeah, that, that makes sense. 
Yeah, it's true. I mean, no one really cares about how Adele feels about uh, that broken relationship. Right. They want to take their song, and that song has to talk about them, about their life, about their experience, about their men, their women. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's crucial today. We live in a, we live in a time when social media, it's 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 the key for everything: connection, interaction. So even music, it's not like in the set, like in the sixties and the seventies anymore, where singers, band, they were like God. You couldn't mm-hmm. touch them. Right. Today, you know, you can write a message on Facebook. You can, you can write to, uh, you can, you can head to Coldplay, you no know, Facebook page, and mm-hmm. write Chris Martin a message, and he might get back to you. Right. That yeah. was impossible. That was there was that was impossible thirty years ago. Yeah. Or even I twenty see. years ago. Today, it's all about interaction. It's all about uh, you're not unreachable anymore. You're there for me. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that wall that Roger Waters from Pink Floyd was talking about is gone, and <laughs> yeah. you need to. I think everyone needs to understand in 2017, you need to be there for the people, not for yourself. You're not God anymore. You're not unreachable. You're not. You're not. You're not holy. Yeah. You're just like them, and yeah. they want to feel something because because of your music. You need yeah. to write about them so they can take no songs and make them yours. I think that's the secret. Then, of course, that's not the only recipe for success. It's a lot about luck, being in the right place at the right time, knowing the right people, having, you need to have talent. Uh, but again, you need to start by writing for the people, not for yourself. Yeah. That's I, what I believe. I agree. I think that's F- great. Fully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't get into uh, music and be like, oh, I'm just in it because I want to make money. A lot, yeah, of mus- a, a lot of musicians are in it because, you know, they've uh, been playing for years, maybe decades. Oh, and and yeah. then and musicians, this is what they this is uh, this is what they like to do. This is how they how they feel. Mm hmm. I mean, money is important. Of course it is. <laughs> but, well, yeah. 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 If, if you, I mean, right, of course. If, like, if you think that you, 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 you get into the music business just because you want to be rich and famous, there are other ways to be rich and famous. Right. It's like uh, so many ingredients in this cake for the cake to be really, really tasty. Mm-hmm. It can be only uh, craving for money. You know, again, you need to be humble, especially today, because everyone can have like a home studio, record um, an EP or song, and just put it out there. 20, 30 years ago, it was different. You had to be discovered in order to have your so- your songs, your album out there on sale. They, everyone can do that. So you need to be different, and you need to be yourself. You can't just follow a trend, try and be someone else, because it's not going to work. I mean, if, if, if you're going to sound like, like Rihanna, I might as well go and see the real Rihanna, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right. I don't exactly. Want, I, don't want, I don't want a Rihanna clone. I just want the real one. So try and be yourself. People are going to love you. People are going to hate you. That's part of the game. Right. Yeah. But today there's so much music out there. There's so much good music out there. Just people that have, I think, the tools uh, and probably the knowledge to to get the message across. Mm-hmm. And uh, but what is there's a lot of music out there. There's a lot of bad music out there. <laughs> so in order yeah. for people to, to to actually find you, you need to do something. You need to do something yourself. No one's gonna uh, take your hand and and walk with you, you know, until the end of, of the road. It's not like that anymore. Now you need to follow. You, know, you need to build your following. You need to gig a lot and you need to play as much as you can like play a thousand gigs if you have to and uh, give interviews like I am right now <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you need to do everything that you can in order to 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 get there no one's going to help you if you don't do it yourself you need to you need to you need to work hard it's much harder than it used to be now you got you got you got a chance to uh, release your music and maybe people in Japan are going to listen to it. That was impossible 20 years ago, which is great. 
right. but it's about a thousand, maybe a million of other artists that are doing the same thing at the very same moment you are doing it. So you need to just, you, you need to be different. You need to find your own way. Uh, yeah, I think that's great. Great advice for everybody. You know. Spot on. I mean, yeah. at least this, this is kind of working for me. You know? <laughs> right. right. Like, because uh, trust me, I've been punched in the face so many times, so many times. <laughs> when, when I thought I was there, I realized that it's, it's a long road, man. It's a very long road. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And what and what may work for you may not necessarily work for someone else. You know, depending oh, on. Oh, oh. Depending on genre or, or you know location or or whatever you're doing, but of course, but, but that's the beauty of it. I mean, like yeah, this is yeah. working for me. Maybe you maybe you can take my advice. You can add something on the top of it. Maybe mm-hmm. with that little something that you added, it's gonna work for you. It's like a cake when I when I when I want to bake a cake. Maybe I can read the recipe on, on the internet. Yeah, it's but like the, I, I it's think, like putting mm, your own spin I on add things. This ingredient, I'm, I might add this ingredient. It might, it might be tasty in this way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's the beauty of it. No one. I mean, you can't just follow the rules by the book. Right. But the one thing I can tell you, as I as I said, one thing I can tell you, uh, I think artists, especially today, when there are hundreds, thousands of people that want to do that, they go to X Factor or this uh, this TV shows, which are just shortcuts for me. Um, everyone wants to make it, so you need to uh, be a little different and stop being selfish. Mm-hmm. You, you you can't just write about how you feel about that girl, which is is great. But it's great if people relate to it. If they don't relate to it, just just go a different path. Just try again until they actually. Um, connect with you connect with what you're saying and that's it's it's, it's a little achievement at least it's a little achievement that's what we are in this business for <laughs> um so your current album gravity always wins is out yes could you tell us yes. a little about how you prepared prepared yourself to uh start making that album and maybe the process of it oh that that was it took forever it took forever to buy that record <laughs> To record it, but we, me and the producer and the team and the musicians are really proud of the final product because I think this really represents what Stephen Bryan is today. And uh, there's no monkey business, it's just me, it's just me on the flight, it's just me and the guitar, and a handful of um, uh, talented musicians around me, simple as that. Um, it took probably about five, six months just to record it because we were never really satisfied with it. Mm-hmm. So in order to get this result, we really had to work hard day and night. But um, uh, it was all worth it. And um, I, I, I'm, for one, really proud of it. Really, really proud. Yeah, it's a, it's a great album. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> And we have. I don't know if you guys listen to it, but <laughs> we've got. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I got lost here on what I was gonna say. <laughs> we got three of your songs. We we already played. Yeah. Um, we played if only at the beginning of the show, and we played. Um, oh, cool. We played dolled up just before we called you. So we've got. Um, uh, Sing to me left that we're gonna play bef- after we let you go, but um. Yeah. Is there anything about those songs you want to tell people about, or? Um... I, I think I, I think those those three songs kind of represent the record. Uh, Sing to me is, is a new single, mm-hmm. and um, the "Dolled Up" is a more intimate song in the record, and uh, lyrically is the song I'm most proud of. And um, if only it's "Melt from America," a lot. When I, when I wrote If Only, I really thought about uh, all the times I've been in this beautiful country because I've always been in love with America, always. And I wanted to write something that smelled like America. Mm-hmm. And If Only, just it. And um, so, yeah, I think the three songs, it's a, 
uh, they really represent the record in the whole. Um, it seems to me is a, is a new single, in uh, but that's you know it is it, the radio friendly mm-hmm. kind of feel. Uh, Dolled up is a song that you want to listen to it when just when you just want to close your eyes and and think about something that makes you feel good. I mm-hmm. I suppose. And if only to me is is kind of USA on the play, but of course with my personal touch, it's my take <laughs> on a on a full country upbeat song. And um, I'm sure people in in, in America are gonna like this. Mm-hmm. And speaking, by the way, speaking of which, um, I already toured America back in 2010, uh, all over the East Coast. Uh, when we went from with my old band from Maine all the way down to South Carolina. Oh wow! And uh, yeah, we're going we're probably going to do the same thing. We're planning the same thing uh, this uh, this spring. Probably be like May June. So I'll be back in in the USA. Awesome. For a tour, yeah, I think it's still gonna be the East Coast. We're gonna hit Boston, New York, New Jersey, uh, Delaware. Um, so I, I, I really can't wait. I mean, when 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 I um, play a gig in in, in in London or in Europe, it, it's cool. Of course, I love I love playing live. But when you play in America, it's just a different ball game. Really, I mean, it's always been my dream. I was <laughs> just a kid. Yes. Just playing in America to me is like uh, there's there's nothing quite like it. So I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, hopefully in a couple of months, two three months, we're really gonna have like some dates to to post on the social networks on the website. And um, I'm thrilled. Awesome. Well, yeah. We. Um... We'll have to get that from you when you guys get the dates figured out and everything, and we can tell people about it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. We'll spread uh, the word for you. Cool, yeah. cool. Uh, so, I guess thanks for coming on and talking to us and uh, telling us about all of your music. And um, Is there anything else you'd like to say to people before we let you go? That it's, been a, it's been a real pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you for calling me. Thank you for having me, and um, talk to you next time. Yeah, keep All in right. touch with us, and um, it was it's great having you on. And yeah, definitely. Thank you for uh, taking the time cool. out of your day to talk to us. Mm-hmm. Ah, it was a pleasure. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you have a good right. rest of your weekend. Oh, thank you very much, guys. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. That was uh, was, uh, Stephen Bryan. Yep. Sorry, I didn't want to cut you out there when I clicked that. Oh, no, you're fine. (laughs) So, yeah, Stephen Bryan, um, he's on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. His website is stephenbryanmusic.com. You can find his album Gravity Always Wins on all main digital outlets. Uh, Yeah, but thanks to Stephen for taking time out of his day and talking with us. Yeah, we got one more song, uh, Sing to Me, so let's listen to that. Let's hear it. Seems to me it's everything that I want to hear. Everything I could ever need. Every time that
everything I could ever need. Everything I could ever need.